S23 looks for a third of the price, this might be a good deal. So yes, on the back, the A34 does look very similar to its more expensive S23 siblings, but there are plenty of differences with this and those phones. For starters, the build quality of the A34, of course, is downgraded considerably from the S23 models. It's an all plastic design. You've got a matte plastic back and then plastic rails around the outside. But of course, the same individual camera rings on the back, which I'll talk a little bit more in detail in a bit. On the right of the phone, you've got your power button and above that, your volume rockers. On the left of the phone is completely clean. At the top, you've got your SIM tray, which can house a micro SD card as well and a microphone. And then on the bottom of the phone, you've got a speaker, USB-C charging port, which can support 25 watt fast charging, and then another microphone. Up front, you've got a large 6.6 inch 1080p 120 hertz AMOLED display. And then up in the top center, you've got a 13 megapixel selfie camera at f2.2, and then a slightly thicker chin on the bottom of the phone. But overall, the design and the feel of the A34 is really nice, actually. Of course, it's not as premium to hold in the hand as the S23s or any other glass-made phone, but overall, it's a really nice phone to hold in the hand. It's a little bit wider than the A33 that came before it. It's a 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio as opposed to the 20 by 9 on the A33. Although it doesn't sound like a big difference, there is a difference in holding the two. The A33 did feel considerably slimmer than this A34. But overall, the display on the A34 is really, really nice. And thanks to that 120 hertz refresh rate, overall navigating of this display is really great as well. It's very responsive. It's a very crisp display as well, just a shade under 400 pixels per inch, and it is protected with Corning Gorilla Glass 5. I have put a screen protector on the phone as well, which I do with all of them anyway. But overall, it seems pretty durable, and like I said, very, very clear. And it's also very bright. Maximum brightness outdoors is over a thousand nits, which for a budget phone is actually pretty good. I actually recently used this as my daily phone for a little bit when I was on holiday in Turkey, and I have got a real world test video of my experience up on my channel now. So be sure to check that out. I'll leave a link down in the description if you do want to check that out as well. So like I said, overall, the display on the A34 is really nice. Would I have liked the bezels to be a little bit slimmer? Yes, especially that bottom chin. It would have been a little bit nicer if it's just they managed to shrink that down a little bit more than they have, but overall it doesn't intrude too much on the display and everything looks really, really great. And as for software, the phone comes with Samsung's new One UI version 5.1 on top of Android 13. So it is nice and up to date. And of course now Samsung are one of the better ones for promising software updates. So you'll probably get three, four, maybe even five years of full software updates on this A34, which is something that is really great, especially in the budget segment. And it is something that might sway you towards buying this phone. But overall, One UI is really great. It's very well optimized for this phone. I haven't had any instances of any stutters or anything like that. Of course, there are a few of Samsung's pre-loaded apps on the phone, which are basically duplicated of Google's apps. You can delete them if you want, but a lot of the time Samsung do put them in their own little folder so you can sort of tuck them out of the way. But overall, the use of the phone and the software experience has been really pleasant. One UI is one of my favorites, as well as Magic UI. I do quite like Magic UI on the Honor phones, and then of course, stock Android. So One UI on the A34 is really great, really well optimized and very smooth. That is of course helped by the performance of the A34, and it's using a MediaTek Dimensity 1080 processor built on a six nanometer architecture. So that has given me really great performance every day that I've used it even when I was on my real world test as well. And that is backed up with either six or eight gigabytes of RAM and either 128 or 256 gigabytes of expandable storage. So the fact that you can get expandable storage on the A34 seems to be a bit of a rare occurrence these days. Most manufacturers seem to be getting rid of the micro SD card support, but that is not the case on the A34 if you do like expanding your storage. I'm not an avid gamer, but the little bit of gaming that I did do on the A34 ran absolutely fine with the details set to medium or high, really depending on the game that you're playing. But also on my real world test video with the section where all the photos are going along in sequence, I did actually put all of that together on the A34 using its built-in create a movie mode in the gallery. And that processed it pretty quickly, actually. It did a really great job at processing it and it came out really great. And as for the battery on the Galaxy A34, you get the normal large 5,000 milliamp hour battery with support for Samsung's 25 watt charging. 
and as my real world test can attest to, the battery life on the A34 has been absolutely great. I think I managed about four to four and a half hours of screen on time with about 30 or 40% left in that real world test. And that was pretty much the case with my entire use of the phone even before I went on holiday. So the battery life on the A34 has been absolutely great. Can't complain about it. Of course, charging speeds aren't as fast as what you'll find on other phones like Xiaomi phones or Honor, which can do 60 watt plus charging. But the charging speeds are enough, I think, for most people. And of course, most people charge overnight as well. So it don't really matter too much in that situation as well. And lastly, onto the cameras of the Galaxy A34. You get a triple camera setup headlined by a 48 megapixel F1.8 primary camera. Then you get an eight megapixel F2.2 ultra wide, and then a five megapixel F2.4 macro camera. And as for overall photos on the Galaxy A34, these have come out really great, plenty of detail, and Samsung's usual color pop as what I've found on other Samsung devices that I've used and what I've seen on other reviews. I've been really happy with the results coming from this main camera. The only issues that I did find, or not issues as such, but it is across the board with most budget phones, is when lighting does get a little bit tricky, that's when you do see the quality deteriorate pretty quickly. Of course, Samsung do have their built-in night mode as well to help brighten certain scenarios in those situations but overall the camera experience on the A34 from that primary camera has been really really pleasant. Portrait mode does a great job at separating the subject from the background and that wide f1.8 aperture helps to create natural depth of field as well even when you're not using portrait mode when you're taking pictures of plants or things like that there's a good amount of background blur in your photos anyway. And then moving on to the ultra wide, it's basically very similar to other budget ultra wides at eight megapixels, although you don't seem to get the same loss of detail around the edges of the photos, at least from my eyes, than what it was apparent on a lot of the other budget phones from Motorola or Honor. This does seem to perform just a little bit better and you get the same saturated colors as what you find on the main camera as well. And that is something that I was quite thankful for because quite often you get a quite a large amount of color shift switching from the main to the ultra wide cameras on a lot of budget phones, but that wasn't the case on the A34. And then of course the five megapixel macro camera is about what you'd expect in this budget segment. It is of course slightly more higher resolution than the two megapixel macro cameras found on other budget devices. But of course five megapixels isn't the highest resolution. But then at the same time on a couple of the Honor phones that I've reviewed recently, they've had five megapixel ultra wides. So if you look at it like that, that's not a bad resolution to have on this macro camera. And it performs about as you'd expected, but to be fair, it's not that bad. You do get a reasonable amount of detail. Of course, the quality of the sensors on the macro cameras and even on the ultra wides aren't gonna be anywhere near what you'd find on the main cameras. So quality isn't gonna be as good naturally. But yeah, the quality of the macro camera is not bad. I'm kind of glad they got rid of that pointless depth sensor because of course other cameras such as the ultra wide or the macro camera can be used for depth detection in portrait mode and stuff like that. And that was exactly the case on this phone. And then switching over to the 13 megapixel selfie camera, this performed pretty well as well, about what you'd expect from a budget device. And 13 megapixels is kind of the sweet spot, I think, in resolution. Eight megapixels or five megapixels is a little bit low, but there are others with 32 megapixels or 24 megapixel selfie cameras, which scream like they're gonna be really great quality because of that resolution. But then in the long run, they don't actually perform that well. Whereas the 13 megapixels here on the A34 did perform really well. And there was plenty of detail and portrait mode did a pretty decent job at separating the subject from the background again, about what you'd expect from a budget phone. And of course it's all being done by Samsung software. It did do a pretty good job. And then of course video can be shot at up to 4K off the main camera, but of course you only get Samsung's super steady stabilization at full HD at 30 FPS. So if you want smooth 1080p at 60 FPS, you're not gonna get that stabilization and of course at 4K at 30 FPS. So if you want that super steady mode, then you're gonna to have to dial it down to 1080p at 30 FPS. But overall, it was some pretty decent video about what you'd expect in this price bracket and about what I'd expect from a budget Samsung phone. Pretty good, plenty of detail and good amounts of color. 
yeah, can't complain too much. But unfortunately, one thing that I did find when it comes to the video mode, and to be fair, this is a bit of a rare occurrence in budget phones, but I have found a couple of others. Video mode doesn't seem to be supported on the ultra wide camera. Now, I'm not quite sure why Samsung have done this. I don't know how many other Samsung phones have taken this route as well, but that is something that's unfortunate if you do want to get a little bit of a wider shot in your videos. You're not going to be able to do that with the Galaxy A34. Unfortunately, where permitted, you're going to have to just take a step back to get a little bit more in your shot. So that's just something to bear in mind if you're looking at the Galaxy A34 and if you particularly want video mode to be supported on the ultra wide, that isn't going to be the case here on the Galaxy A34. And just lastly, a couple of things that I did forget to mention at the beginning of this video in terms of the build quality. The speaker at the bottom, it is actually a stereo speaker setup on this phone. So you get, of course, a speaker at the bottom and then a speaker at the top in the earpiece. And you do get full IP67 water and dust resistance on the Galaxy A34. So that is something that is nice to have in this price bracket. There are other phones that do offer some kind of water resistance or water repellent coating like IP53 rating, but you do get full IP67 on the Galaxy A34. So again, something to bear in mind if you're looking at this phone and overall the Galaxy A34 I think is a really great phone to have. It's currently available in Argos for about 350 quid and I think if you paid that full price for this phone I don't think you'd be disappointed. You get a really good combination of great performance, a nice smooth display, a really nice and punchy display, a decent camera system and really great battery life. Now I was lucky enough to pick this up off eBay for about 220 quid something like that basically brand new in the box with unused cable etc so if you do shop around you're likely to find this phone at a really competitive price now of course there are other budget phones from the likes of honor and oppo and realme that have come out but of course they go in different directions in terms of their software but of course there is now the new Pixel 7a which has just been released and then of course the Pixel 6a from last year you can probably pick up for some really great used prices on eBay as well. So that's just something to bear in mind if you're looking at the A34. If you're stuck on a Samsung phone it's a really great phone to have but otherwise you could shop around and see what other deals you can pick up on some other phones. But let me know down in the comments what you think of the Galaxy A34. Like I said personally for me I think it's a really great phone. There's not really anything I can think of that I would change as such in terms of its price bracket but let me know down in the comments and if you enjoyed this video stick a thumbs up on it and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos and don't forget to check out my real world test on the Galaxy A34 link down in the description and I'll see you there.